happy Thursday! Thanks for joining me tonight for some craft night with friends. Uh, we are con continuing on the back of my quilt here. Uh, we're working on the back of the granny square quilt. So once we get this done, then we can sandwich the quilt together and start uh, quilting it, which is sewing it together, all the three layers. Uh, so I'm, I'm working towards that here. <laughs> and we're just having fun playing around with what we can do with this back. So I think we are about halfway done unless we do something else with it. And uh, I'm hoping to get pretty far in that tonight. So thanks for joining me. My name's Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make cute embroidery kits for beginners. And I'm here every weeknight, Monday through Friday at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. And it's a time that we can relax and craft together. So thanks again for joining me. Let's uh, continue on our quilt today. All right, you guys. Hello, hello. All right, so here's where we left off. We got kind of this little patchworky rectangle thing going with these strips going through. I'm happy that we're using up those strips. We're playing with those big stripes that we had um, earlier. So I'm having fun. I think this is going to be kind of neat. I'm tempted. <laughs> I'm tempted to actually chop this up more and maybe make like some half square triangles out of these with the teal or something else too. But for now, we are going to make this basically uh, pattern textile here. Uh, so we're going to keep going with that. So this is um, this is four of the main pieces, uh, those main big strips on here, and we have four left. So I'm actually going to make that separately. So I'm going to set this one aside for now. I just got to make sure I, get, I start with the blue side up. So same as, as this one. And uh, we'll make the other half. It's just much easier to do smaller pieces together than keep sewing it onto the big one. So we'll sew these smaller pieces together and then hook it on to the large one later. So hope everyone is doing well. Thank you so much again for your orders today on, uh, on our new website. We are officially uh, live at penguinandfish.com now as well. So you can find us there. All right, and uh, we got the embroidery of the month going in our new kits. I think I have that here still. Oh yeah, so our new uh, embroidery of the month, the little hummingbird. We'll be stitching that not next week, but the week after. So there's still time to grab your kit. Otherwise, we also do have the PDF pattern if you want to uh, trace it yourself and, and do it that way. And we had a lot of people download our free uh, our free raccoon pattern today as well. So I, I hope you guys are getting starting to get your emails on that. That's this design here. We're actually giving this away as a free pattern, but we do have it as um, part of a kit too. If you want uh, all the supplies for it as well, if you you know if you don't want to trace it yourself with the PDF pattern. So those are our two big new things in the in the shop right now. But yes, be sure to download download the free pattern. Uh, and I just wanted to share, look, this came from eBay today. So <laughs> I've been wanting to make that quilt coat and I think this is kind of it. I've been looking at, at this sort of style. So I'm thinking mostly like this one where it's an actual starts out quilted. And then like button up with big pockets and uh, this sort of collar. Anyway, this is gonna be my new chore coat, I think. So I'd love to do this out of my my leader leader and enders that we're making. Uh, so uh, maybe I can figure this out <laughs> when I'm visiting my my uh, family next week and uh, see how big of pieces I actually need to make. So I'm not gonna actually probably make it into a quilt first. I'll make pieces large enough and then I still want to quilt them though. So I'll still, I'll still like make quilted pieces, but I'm only going to make them big enough for like the, like what I need to actually make, make the coat. But I do want to give that a try. I think that will be fun. Uh, that's not going to be an instant project, but, um, so this is the one that I got though. It's, uh, it's the McCall's, oh, here's the pattern. 
So eight five two two, and I got the medium and the the small. It comes in a bunch of different sizes, uh, and they're all kind of separate, which is weird. But uh, there you go. We will attempt this at some point. <laughs> I'm gonna make that that quilted chore coat. I'm set on it now. <laughs> all right. Anyway, let's get sewing. I'm gonna sew these strips together here. I'm always sewing on the left side of what will be the piece, then then we'll be like trading off uh, easier. So, all right, let's do it. So that that whole thing, the idea of this quilt coat, came from that psychic outlaw. Uh, artist that I follow on, on Instagram. So I think it's like psychic dot outlaw or something, but if you just go to psychic out, you could just Google psychic outlaw quilt coats or chore coats and you'll see kind of what I'm talking about. I, I just want to make one. I actually want to purchase one, <laughs> uh, but I'm like, oh man, but I'd want it with my own quilt and stuff. So I don't know. I want to order one just to like support her as an artist because I love the I love it so much. But um, I don't know. Got to make it out of my own quilt. I think my mom said that she might have a quilt around that she was thinking would be cute. So I'm I'm gonna bring it home to my parents' house and we'll we'll see. Maybe we'll make a mock-up or something. Or we'll just not do it and, and put it on the docket, though. Oh, speaking of, tomorrow is uh, Finish It Friday. Oh, yeah, so I just got the different sizes, Noeline, in case um, we wanted to try a couple different sizes and... Uh, if I wanted to keep it at my mom's and then I have a different size or whatever. So I figured, eh, I'll just get both sizes to test it out um, so I don't have to buy it again. It was weird because the pattern didn't come with more than one size. I think it, it did, but like it's like a small was a range and a medium was a range and then there was like large and extra large. So I just like, eh, let's get this small and medium and see, see what it is. Oh, Teresa, I finished the sheep pillow. So, uh, um, oh man, maybe I never took a, I think I shared it here. I'll have to get that out tomorrow. But uh, Jenna today mentioned a project that I have unfinished. <laughs> so I am going to resurrect that project. And that's the swan, the hand quilting, um, that swan embroidery that I'm hand quilting into like a zipper pouch. So uh, I think we'll do some more hand quilting on that. I think I'm actually done with the hand quilting on the swan part and I need to figure out the back. Actually, I'm not quite sure where I'm at with that project, that, which makes it a perfect Finish It Friday project. Uh, Finish It Friday is the first Friday of, um, the first Friday of the new month, which is tomorrow. We, uh, stop what we're doing and we take out some project that we haven't worked on in a long time, brush it off and give it an hour of love. Basically we work on it for, for an hour. And I'm telling you, since, since I've put it, that into practice, I mean, it's literally one hour a month, right? I mean, that's not much, but that has sparked me finishing so many projects, just getting it out again. And uh, then I, then it's just like, all right, we're getting this thing done. You know, the hour that we put in is, you know, I'm not finishing it in, the, in that hour, but it's the catalyst to getting it done. So that's been one of my favorite things is finish it Friday. So I think, yeah, I think we're going to work on that swan embroidery tomorrow. That was our first ever embroidery of the month project. Oh, I'm almost done with this one. 
been yammering the whole time and now it's about done. Lisa, Lisa is asking, Alyssa, do you think you'll ever create fabric again? What you had was super cute. Oh, that's really sweet. Um, I would love to. I haven't really pursued it since I stopped doing these. But it's been in my the back of my head lately, so um, I do like that idea. <laughs> we'll see. Um, I don't have nothing in the works or anything now, but I think it would be really fun to design fabric again. I really do like it. All right, so this is the next one. So I'm gonna just set that aside. So the next piece, I want the pink at the top, because this one had the blue at the top. So I'm gonna put this on the left side of it. Should be here. So I'm, I'm, this is like piece number two. So once I finish, ooh, let's cut the salvage off. Once I finish this one, I'll sew this one to the one that we just, just did here. Okay, I think we're set. Lisa, they, ah, so Lisa said, I'm just reading some earlier comments. Hi, quilted jackets are the rage these days. They totally are. Like, how crazy is that? I mean, in, in, like, mega fashion, too, like, in, you know, Vogue sort of fashion, too, they're, they're in, which is just so fun. I'm excited for it. I think they're cute and sweet and a zillion percent practical, which you gotta love. I love that they're called a chore quilt. I mean, that or a chore coat. That's kind of part of the charm of it, I think. But, you know, I'm just thinking, oh, I'm gonna go on a little walk outside. And I'm gonna, like, if I see a pretty stone, I'm gonna put it in the big uh, chore coat pocket. Or I'm gonna carry my, you know garden tool over on a, a chilly morning when I needed to grab the, the chore quilt or chore coat. I just think it is fun. Or my mom was saying, or sitting by the campfire, just grab the chore coat. I like it. Then it's just like you're wrapped in a quilt. I'm excited for it. Yeah, I'd love to design fabric again sometime. So we'll see what this looks like when I'm done and, and how big this ends up being. But I'm toying with the idea of, like if this is still quite a bit small, like if we still need to add like a lot, I was thinking that maybe instead of putting teal borders all the way around, I could chop this up into squares, like chop it up even more. So we'd have like these wacky looking squares 
and then I could cut teal squares and kind of make a like a big patchwork or something like that alternates between plain teal square and wacky uh, fabric piece I think that might be kind of fun too For some reason I'm feeling the need to like get more and more into the back of this quilt. We'll see how I feel when uh, when this is done. I might just be like, eh, nope, let's just put the borders on and make it big enough and be done. Alright, I need a, another leader piece. this end off. I'm being really like scrappy as far as not really following the rules and whatever uh, like to make a really nice clean piece here. Um, I'm going under, under the assumption that my ends are not going to line up and I will trim those later so I'm not worried about trimming this perfectly right now. I mean these are weird angled ends anyway. So I'm just chopping it off with my scissors. I'm not being precise or anything about it. Okay so now we got our uh, left piece with the the skinny strip, then this guy, and now we can sew it to this one. Yeah, so I'm trading off, I'm switching, flipping uh, every other row of, of these, so yeah, so this looks right. Let's put those ends together and uh, sew down that row. So I'm just basically combining the last, the last two chunks that we sewed. Oh, <laughs> thanks, Nolene. Yep, if I'm if I'm feeling it, might as well just give it a try. I like the idea of that you sew it into something and, and chop it up right after. We could, <laughs> instead of doing a, like a patchwork where I trade off squares, we could make like a big granny square we could instead of do it but instead of making it by strips we could make it by just squares that we sew together so i could figure out like if we wanted like one of these in the middle and then we put um four teal ones around there and then we put oh i think that would still get us a patchwork wouldn't it i don't know i'd have to play around with it but we could, we could um, try and get a granny square look to this thing. Oh, we'd have to turn it on an angle though, that uh, on 45 degrees. I don't know if I want to do all that. Eh, we'll see. Maybe just the patchwork, or maybe none of it. We'll decide once I get all these sewn together first. I may just want to finish this up. Because that won't be till next month anyway. So it's going to be on the whim of whatever we want to do next month. Oh, you're right. Uh, so nuts. I was saying this backing would be great for your chore quilt. This would be or for a chore coat. I just keep saying chore quilt. Uh, it would be so fun to have like a bright, fun piece like this. If you do check out, anyone check out the Psychic Outlaw Instagram or whatever, and if you just start digging through those photos and stuff, it's so interesting how sometimes she cuts whatever the design is in the quilt, and it she just cuts it perfectly so it, it fits in the coat 
just so neat. Like, you know, one stripe will be like right at the waist or something, or if it has a scalloped, the, the quilt has a scalloped, um, scalloped edge, she'll like maybe put that as the bottom. Um, like, so the bottom of the coat has a scallop, or like, you know, if, if it has applique flowers, those will be in just the right cute spot. It's just really fun. I think there's probably a freedom that comes with working with um, vintage quilts and just like quilts that were basically, you know, being thrown away, really. Uh, I think there's probably more freedom to be like, eh, yeah, we'll chop this up and put this part of it here and that part of it there. Where I would think like if it's your own quilt that you're doing, it might be a little scarier to, to cut up. So in my head, I'm kind of cheating because I won't be making a, a whole quilt to cut up. I'll be making pieces that imply that it was a quilt, even though it wasn't. I'll be making quilted fabric that I use for it. And again, this is all theoretical. Oops, sorry. Uh, this is a potential project. We'll see. Wow, yeah, this strip didn't make it all the way down. I think I kind of knew that going in, though. All right, while I'm here, let's snip this guy off. Missed him. All right, and... Ooh, I'm going to have to cut more leader and ender squares soon here. I don't think I have nearly enough yet for a, for a quilt coat. All right, we have some segments sewn together here. All right, goes in this direction. Okay, two pieces, so I'll set this one, these two aside while I, so the last two, yep, these are the last two, and then we will sew it to this, and then we'll sew the two big chunks together, so I think we can get, yeah, we'll get a little further on this yet tonight. Huh, but, oh, and that's right, we, there's actually less work, I only have to sew this one on because I don't have any on the outer edge. So this is actually my last strip. Um, so we'll sew this on, and then I'll sew it to this guy right away. And then we're ready to sew it to the bigger piece. Ooh, good, so we're farther than I thought here. All right, so now this one, the blue, has to go on the top. All right, and I wanna get the left side. So go here. Oh, let's, I've been starting at the bottom. Here we go. Oh, salvage. All right. <laughs> this is such a crazy line here, but we'll, we'll still go to the end-ish, kind of like this. Okay, last strip. I'm so happy you guys are liking the free raccoon. Yes, so head over to Penguin and Fish. Uh, I think I have a link to it below here, but you can just go to Penguin and Fish and then um, just the, uh, in the in the main nav, it'll say free sampler or free embroidery sampler, free raccoon sampler, I forget. Uh, and that will get you to uh, a post about it, and then within the post, like if you scroll down in the post, there'll be a little form uh, within the text area, and that that will uh, get you the free the free raccoon pattern. And you'll get a series of emails on how to do the 14 stitches that are in there as well. So it's a nice 
a walkthrough of how to do all the how to do all that. Oh, Lisa says I looked at her site. So the um, uh, psychic outlaw, and you love her dresses. Yes, so she does uh, dresses out of pink or out of um, oh gosh, like handkerchiefs. That's not bandanas. Jeez. Okay, I'm like that is not the right word. Out of out of bandanas, and I think a lot of those are vintage too. I think so. She'll like put colors of bandanas together and then you order the like bundle of colors that you like and then she'll make a dress out of it and then she also has started doing uh oh gosh I don't even know what that's called have you seen this where you have like that water and then you put the paint or ink or whatever on top and then it just makes um like if you put like the dot inside another dot it'll just blow up and then you put like the lines through it and stuff do you guys know what i'm talking about i feel like uh i should know the name of this but then you lay like some fabric on top and it it makes that pattern she's been making fabric designs like that and and making them into dresses as well they're just it's just fun hip and trendy and quilty which is all fun I got my June embroidery of the month and the raccoon. Love them. Awesome. Yes. So I definitely want to stitch the raccoon up um, live here. Now that will take a little longer than a week, I think. There's kind of a lot going on there. And if we go over each stitch and everything, it'll take a, it'll take some time. So we'll have to plan, plan for a nice stitch long. It took me about eight hours to, to do it. Uh, not tie-dye, Catherine, in the sense of what I'm thinking of. I mean, I, it's got to be called something other than tie-dye. Oh, marbleize, marble, marbleizing. That's it, Marie. Marble, is it marbling or marbleizing? I wonder. Um, but that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, where that that's closer than tie-dyeing in in my head. Yeah, floating the dye. Oh, that's interesting. Nope, not silk screening. Um, silk screening, that's, um, that's like, that's an another word for screen printing, I think. Uh, I think, like, the marbleizing technique. But yes, it's like a bed of what, what I'm assuming is water. I've never done it. <laughs> I've only seen, you know, like, Facebook videos of it and stuff. And some sort of ink or some sort of dye or some sort of something that sits on top of the water and then you put like I think I think it works with silk or something but yeah you can make a bunch of patterns from it being on the top like marbling um, and then <laughs> yes kind of like what what uh, people do with nail polish to like put all the fun colors together and run a like a stiletto through it to make it kind of fun and then dipping dipping into it kind of a oh, dip dyeing a dip dip marble not marbling yep exactly pamela they do it on silk silk skirts or scarves i mean oh pamela pamela says i've been following her for a couple years on instagram and have saved so many of her coat photos Ugh, how cool i mean don't you agree? Like some of them, just where her placement of like where she puts the details of the quilt are just so perfect. And what's neat is that in her shop, she only shows, well, she has some finished pieces, but her main way of doing it is she just gets these vintage quilts from somewhere. I don't know like that whole deal because that's pretty awesome. So somehow she's getting zillions of just vintage quilts 
I'm thinking some of them are not in great quality and stuff, but you know, you cut around that for a quilt. But yeah, so so when you order, uh, you know, she'll she'll announce, hey, it's a quilt drop, whatever, on you know Sunday or whatever, and so you go to the website, and then you have to like quickly pick your quilt. So you are not seeing a coat. You are not seeing anything. You are just guessing what it might potentially be, what this artist might make for you based on the quilt. So you gotta just go in like kind of blind and pick pick a quilt and then she'll, then you, then you get to say, okay, I want a long coat or I want, you know, a zippered coat or whatever. You get to tell her stuff after that, but you, you basically just claim a quilt and then she'll make it into just something cool. Like she'll she'll design it and put it together. Anyway, I think it's just so fun. Been yammering about it lately. <laughs> it's just sticking with me for some reason. Uh, this idea of the, that quilt coat. Okay, now see, now this we only have to sew to this guy. We don't have to uh, make a whole nother, or we don't have to sew a whole nother strip. So this is just going to go, okay, the pink at the top for this one. All right, let's go to the bottoms here. Oh yeah, Pamela says, yes, they are amazing placement of shapes and she has a great eye. Yes, they're so fun. And then, you know, she's just one of these, seems like one of these fun, cool artists uh, who just like takes these, gets these um, beautiful photos of, of the stuff and it, it all just looks like really fun. All right, now this just flips this way. Oh, this one I can do from the top. I'm just getting discombobulated here. I'm going to flip this over the top so it meets right there. All right, I think we have it. That would be fun, Pamela, doing a quilt coat project. Well, I probably won't get to it for a while, so I, I can post what the pattern is that I'm gonna use. I should check it out first. I may have to, we'll do a test. And uh, if it's cool, then we'll see if we can get more of this pattern. But it looks like a pretty basic, simple pattern. And that's what I'm hoping because I don't know how to sew clothes. <laughs> and sizing is always so weird and, and stuff. But you know, in theory, it should be like an oversized coat. But you still want it to fit. But, like you still want the shoulders in the right spot and stuff. I might play around with it, see what happens. At some point. I have so much muslin, like extra muslin from all our embroidery kits. Like just that just, you know, have flaws. Stuff that we couldn't that couldn't go in the kits. But I've kept it all. I've, I've kept all those fabric scraps from years of, of these kits. And uh, so I could easily sew a bunch of those little pieces together. And I was thinking that could be the, the lining. I think I talked about this already. And um, I, could use, I could quilt the pieces with like a colorful thread. And then you could see that colorful thread on the, in the lining part of the quilting. I just think it'd be fun. The pattern specifically says it has a variation um, to do it if you're using a quilted fabric. So, I mean, you know, it's technically designed for, you know, an outside piece and then a lining piece and you sew those pieces together. But it did, it did very much say that there's a variation where you can uh, use pre-quilted fabric, like a quilt. I suspect you just um, sew the seams shut with like some bias tape 
At least that's what I'm thinking. Ooh, I can make like really bright, colorful bias tape. So then uh, if you have the, if you see the inside of the jacket, it'll be just white, but the stitching will be color. And then it would have like really bright colored bias tape on the seams. That would be really fun. And then maybe I'd have like the like pockets, the like, if, if there's bias tape on the top of the pocket, that could be bright too. And that would look really pretty on, cause this is, you know, my, my quilt or my, um, my leader and ender pieces are pretty like muted and plaids and just, you know, kind of farm muted, whatever style. So like a really bright pop of just a, like a skinny line pop, um, of color here and there would be really kind of cool with it, I think. Oh, Pamela says the, the pattern looks very close to one of her coats. So I, I was looking for something very close to hers because I just, I just really liked it. Um, so I did, I did do some vintage pattern digging and, and found those on, on eBay. I think she, I read somewhere that she uses a, a simple, like a, a vintage pattern as well. And definitely I was looking for something that seemed simple enough that didn't have like lots of frills and stuff because I didn't think I could deal with all that. Um, like a lot of, a lot of patterns and, a, you know, a lot of bells and whistles, but I just wanted simple. Oh yeah, French seams could encase, yeah, I could do that. It'd be fun to do a version that maybe didn't have batting in, but I like the idea of, I like the idea of doing the whole quilt with batting and stuff. French seams would be really pretty though too. I haven't done French seams on something in a while. We should do that. All right, we're getting there with this. Just a lot of long rows today. Okay, get a leader in there. My stiletto to help me out a bit. Okay, let's get this to the piece we did earlier. So we need blue, pink, blue, pink. All right, so let's flip this over. So really two more seams on this. Ooh, Linda says you could add a few rows of bright fabric blocks to place at the end of the sleeves. Ooh, yes, that'd be pretty. Ooh, but I'm kind of liking, I'm just like, <laughs> ooh, we're brainstorming here. Uh, I've not thought about any of this beforehand, but I love that idea of just like a pop of color in it. Just a teeny, teeny, tiny bit to make it like just fresh and modern a little bit. Like it looks like just like a, a, just a chore coat with the, that sort of the half square triangle pattern over the whole thing, but then just, yeah, a little pop of color, real little, that'd be fun. Uh, Robbie Lynn says, yes, we used a piece of flannel in the quilted jackets back in the day. Ooh, that sounds so comfy. Yeah, I could put flannel as a lining instead of batting. That's true. I like that idea. I 
I have some... I save all my, like, little batting pieces. I wonder if... I wonder if I have enough scrap batting that it would work for the pieces, but I, I have a hunch that they're not the right. I would have to, like, Frankenstein them, them together, and I don't really know if I want to do that. Then I risk, like, a chunky coat. Ooh, the collar pop, like a pop of color underneath the collar there. That would be super cute, too. I like that idea, Amy. Yeah, I just like these hidden pops of color within it. I like it. This is all twisted in my lap. Okay. I should maybe be a little bit more thoughtful on how I lay this in my lap, or maybe I should throw it over my shoulder or something, then maybe I w it wouldn't just, like, twist up in a pile. I could, like, plan and prep a little bit for these long lines. Come on. Get lined up there. I'm hoping I can get this this whole thing sewed together. I just have this row, and then we put the two pieces together. We should be able to finish that tonight. I should put my glove on. I'm gonna do that. It's my hand is just sliding all over this fabric, and this glove is just a little grippy. I think that might help me deal with all the bulk. iron this or anything yet either. That may be for another day next month. Bubbling up from underneath. Let's yank on that there. Ugh, I'm having the darnest time, like, keeping this together. Almost done here, though. It's gonna be good enough. Let's get another leader and ender, and we just have one more seam left. And we are done! Cool! Alright, let's see what these guys look like together. Oh, get him. Zoop. I was starting with this blue over there. It's turning into something. It'll be funny with this little green, like, up and down little bit here. I'm excited to see what this looks like all together. All right, so let's get this one on it. Okay, so I'm going to flip this over the top. 
shimmy sham this up and okay let's match that bit there and then we'll see how this ends up Let's get that glove on again for sure now. This one's taking my concentration, I feel like, dealing with the big bulky pieces. I think that might be my least favorite thing, all these big bulky pieces. It is nice to see them come together though, that's, that's true. Oh jeez, I feel like I almost got my finger in there. Ooh, everyone who ordered uh, um, from the new website we got, uh, at least um, yesterday and today's orders, we got all ready and they're sent out. So you'll have your new kit soon. Um, I'm excited to hear how you, how you guys um, like them, if you like them or not. Oh, Patty says I can never sew with the glove. Yeah, I've just, I like, I feel like I need it for the grippiness of it. Or I need like grippies on my, my hands. Just grabbing the fabric just feels like it's, I feel like I gotta push harder without the glove just to hold everything in place. All right, yeah, I'm annoyed with this. There we go. little edges together. Luckily I don't have to be too precise with this because it's just whatever all over the place. Posted a striped binding to Instagram. Ooh! Striped binding, I love that idea. So like with a bunch of different fabrics together or like a stripey fabric to make like a candy cane sort of look. Oh, sometimes if it's real bulky, you can lay most of it on your table. Oh, that helps. Yeah, I I don't have that much down here anymore. Then just pull it down when sewing it. Okay, let's give that a try. Oh, let's see, I just can't get the two rows to stay together. Oh, there, I'm pulling it a little bit more. I think that's helpful. We are almost to the end here. It's this bright green and then our pink, which is at the end. 
Oh yeah, pulling on it is, is helpful to keep that bottom piece from bubbling up or bubbling to the side. Good tip. before. I just sewed it to another weird bulky piece here. Hold on. That's just wacky. Let's let's get this guy in here. Good thing this is our last seam because I'm being crazy. I totally just stitched it to another piece here. Jeez. I'm just gonna cut it. I suspect we'll trim all this off anyway. Jeez. All right, let's check it out. Oh, let's get this leader off of the top. All right, where does it open? Here we go. Okay, so there we'll just scooch up with it. Then it transitions to like this little kind of green center, green and blue center. And uh, then back to the opposite down here. Oh wow, look at look at this crazy stair stepping. So obviously we'll have to cut that um, apart there. Uh, but fun, so uh, there we are. So we can either, you know, I won't press this tonight, uh, but pressing will be probably the next thing. And then we can decide, okay, do we just wanna put um, some teal teal around it or I still like that idea of chopping it up into like big squares maybe like so or whatever and then put like teal that teal um, fabric next to it the teal is that main color from the front of the quilt so that could be kind of fun I feel like we maybe need to break up break this up um, a little bit but it's fun I'm liking it all right so let me show you guys All right, so there we go. Hold on. So it's kind of fun, crazy. All right, it's kind of fun horizontal. Yeah, I am kind of feeling like chopping it up though. It's a little crazy. I kind of, it's, it's fun. Um, but yeah, I think I want to chop it up even more. So we'll see. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. Uh, so awesome, you guys. Uh, just again, check out. Uh, remember, we have that that stitching raccoon. Uh, we have that free sampler. So this is actually the pattern for this is actually completely free. Uh, we do also have it as a kit version. You don't need the the, the um, digital version of the pattern if you get the kit but it's a nice supplement if you just want the digital pattern available. Uh, but we do have that, check it out. It is totally free. And uh, you get a series of emails on uh, how to do each stitch. So there's 14 different stitches in here. Uh, it's great if you're just starting. And then our embroidery of the month is the hummingbird. So we'll be stitching this up, uh, not next week, but the, the week after. Um, next week will be the uh, Splendid Sampler 2 again. Uh, but we still have one more day. We have Finish It Friday tomorrow. So I am going to break out my swan embroidery. Uh, I'm doing that hand quilting on it, and we're going to turn it into a zipper pouch. Um, we also have the swan as a kit as well. So uh, that's one of our new, our new kits. But I think that'll, that'll be fun to work on again. That's been... 
that one's been sitting around for a while and that's the perfect unfinished project to work on finish it friday so uh, Jenna su suggested that today, and I think that was just right. <laughs> All right. So thank you guys again. Uh, uh, it was fun hanging out with you, and uh, I'll see you all tomorrow. Have a good evening. Good night.